In a previous lesson, we learned how to add and subtract fractions with common denominators, denominators that are the same. Well, what happens if we have fractions with different denominators? Does that mean we can't add or subtract them? The answer is no. In mathematics, we always have a solution. Well, when we have a fraction added to another fraction that have different denominators, or we have a fraction take away another fraction with different denominators, we have to make the denominators the same. So we have to follow a simple process. I'm going to show you after we go through the theory, I'll show you to you in practical, we'll do examples for addition and subtraction. And you'll notice it's not hard. I use this method all the time. It always works and it's pretty easy. Let's see how it's done. First, we need to understand that we have the numerator and we have the denominator. The numerator is the number on top of the fraction bar and the denominator is the number on the bottom of the fraction bar. When we have a fraction added to another fraction or a fraction take away another fraction and we notice that the denominators are different, we have to make them the same. How do we make them the same? First step is to multiply the denominators as you can see in the red arrows. So what we do, we multiply the denominators together. Then second step is to multiply the first numerator with the other denominator as you can see in the green arrow there. The numerator times the denominator. Then we multiply a third multiplication. The second numerator with the first denominator as you can see with the purple arrow there. So first we multiply the denominators together, then we multiply the first numerator with the second denominator and lastly we multiply the second numerator with the, th with the first denominator. What are we trying to do? We are actually making the denominators the same. That's what this process does. Let's see it in action. Two fifths plus one quarter. Hang on, the denominators are different. We have to follow this process very easy. Well, let's start. The first step is to multiply the denominators together. 5 times 4 is 20. We have our plus. 5 times 4, 20. That is our common denominator. Then, in the green arrow, it tells us we have to multiply down 2 times 4, 8. We always start with this one here. 2 times 4 is 8. And then, next arrow, which is in purple, 1 times 5 is 5. Guess what? What can you notice? Common denominators. Now, we can simply add the fraction. 8 plus 5, 13 over 20 is our answer. We multiplied the denominators, then we multiplied the numerator with the second denominator, then we multiplied the second numerator with the first denominator. So we have these arrows. 20 is our common denominator. 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 1 or 1 times 5 is 5. Common denominators. Now we can add 8 plus 5, 13 over 20. We always ask, can we simplify? Well, in this case, 13 over 20, that is our answer. We can't simplify any further. Subtraction, same concept. We can't take away unless we have common denominators. Here they are different. Well, let's follow. First step, as marked in the red arrow, we multiply the denominators to get a common denominator. 3 times 7 is 21. That's done. Then the numerator times the second denominator. 5 times 3 is 15. And lastly, 1 times 7 is 7. We put our arrow just to show our working out. 1 times 7 is 7. 15 take away 7. 21 here. Our answer 
is 8 over 21. Can we simplify? Once again, there is no highest common factor. That's our final answer. It is as simple as that. I'm going to do two more examples. That way you'll get even better at it. Join hundreds of students who excel in maths by learning from the mathstutor.com.au. Through hundreds of comprehensive video maths lessons, a passionate teacher shares his expertise, unique teaching style and methods with you. Go to themathstutor.com.au and join up now. www.themathstutor.com.au Making maths easy. Don't forget to tell your friends.